Hey, last Thursday, we gave you 50 ways to save money on food. How about 50 more? No kidding. That's right. Keep watching. It's no secret that grocery prices are going up and they're continuing to rise like every single week. You know, I got a shock today when I went to Aldi's and I had to pay 99 cents for a little container of mustard that I used to pay 55 cents for just a couple of months ago. Yeah. Wow, that hurt. Now we know this area is a concern to you, so we want to make sure that we give you every opportunity to take advantage of the tips we're going to give. So right now, just grab a pencil and a piece of paper to jot down the ones that are most meaningful to you so you can put them into practice right away. Now, while you're grabbing that piece of paper and a pen, let us take just a sec in case you are new to our channel, just to introduce ourselves. I'm Hope. And I'm Larry. And we're Under the Median, where every week on this channel, we talk about practical frugality. We drop a new video every Monday and every Every Thursday, we'd be super happy to have you join us as a member of the Under the Median family. All right, we promised you 50 more strategies for saving money on food. When Larry and I got done with last week's video, we kind of looked at each other and said, you know what? We got a few more we'd like to give. So we have some from us and then you, the viewer, sent in your tips and strategies. We're going to go through those as well and give a shout out to those of you who sent in those ideas. You ready? You know, I just want to say I love it when our viewers send yeah. in tips and comments. We learn so much from you guys. You guys rock. All right, now you're ready. Let's go. <laughs> okay. Tip number one. Tip number one is we have a few more apps that you can help you save some money at the grocery store. I think we have three more. Is that right? We do. Now, last week, mm -hmm. we gave you our top two favorites, Ibotta and also Receipt Hog. There are three more. These are ideas that you sent in. And don't worry. We're going to make sure that there are links to all of these apps in the description of this video. The app that several of you pointed out to us as being really helpful, easy to use, you just scan receipts to get points is Fetch. Let us know in the comment section if you too use and enjoy Fetch. The next one is Flash Food, and this was sent in from a viewer from Canada. Flash Food apparently started in Canada, but it is widely available now in the United States as well. I had never heard of it, so I was super excited when several of you pointed this out. Oh, it's an app you download it on your phone, and basically, local stores who use the app are going to let you know when they mark items down 50%. You can actually order those items through the app and pre-pay for them. You just go to the grocery store. There's a special area in the store set up for flash food. They'll have your order all together with your name on it. You take your order and stop by the courtesy desk and say, hey, I'm picking up my flash food order. They'll know it's all pre-paid for. You leave the store with your food in hand. What a fantastic idea. Many of you said you have saved buku dollars on food by using this app. Let us know if you use it it and if you like it. And there's one more app that you also brought to our attention. Flip is another app that will help you save some money at the mm -hmm. store. What Flip does is they have all the ads wherever you live. And you can also search for those items. If they're on sale, they will show up in the search. That's going to save them a lot of time. That's right. So let's say that you want carrots or avocados. You're going to put that into the app and it's going to tell you this is the least expensive place to get carrots or avocados in your area. Great, great, great idea. Now, Dawn sent in that idea, and she also said, you know what? She saves a lot of money by following couponers online. So these couponers match up the items that are on sale at local grocery stores and tell you whether there's also a coupon that mm -hmm. you can apply to those items that are already on sale. Uh, we like to follow the ladies over at Kroger Crazy. Tell us if you also enjoy them. So much fun. Uh, it's Kroger Kroger with a K, of course, and crazy with a K. If you're looking for them, I'll make sure that I leave a link for them in the description of the video. Tip number five, also from Dawn, says she lives in a rural area, 25 minutes from pretty much anything. And she saves money with grocery shipping. Walmart will ship items for free if you spend a minimum of $35. She orders most anything other than perishable food with no expenditure of gas or time. 
Love it. I guess, you know, I knew that Walmart would ship free if it was $35 or more because we've used that before. Never occurred to me to use it to have Walmart ship me food. What a great tip. Mm -hmm. Here's tip number six. Serve multiple meals made from the same main ingredient. We've talked this about this a little bit before, but you know, I got to say, I'm giving a shout out to Laura because Laura did this really, really well recently. She bought three pounds of ground beef on sale. She paid $11 and I'm going to give you a list of everything she made with that one three pound package of ground beef. This deserves one of my drum rolls. Now you go for it. There you go, Laura, <laughs> that drum rolls for you. All right. Meal number one, sweet and sour meatballs with rice and broccoli. Meal number two, meatballs in marinara sauce over spaghetti. Meal number three, meatball sub sandwiches. Number four, hamburgers with oven fries. Number five, meatloaf with baked potato and veggie. Number six, meatloaf sandwiches from the leftover meatloaf. And meal number seven, a pizza topped with just a little bit of ground beef she had left over and some onions. Seven meals from one three pound package of ground beef. The best part of it is that she spent less than $30 that week on all of her groceries. Yeah, she gets a frugal shout out to Laura. Tip Laura, you rock it. <laughs> That's on, that so awesome. Yeah. Tip number seven, Ernestine reminds us that grocery stores are now charging for bags. So remember to take your reusable bags with you or take your plastic bags from your last grocery trip with you to the store. Wow, that's, uh, that's amazing. They're trying to make all the money they can right now. Number eight, Laura freezes milk in an ice cube tray and then puts the cubes in a Ziploc bag. Two normal size cubes equals one quarter cup. Hmm. I do the same thing with a, a citrus juice. So if I buy a huge bag of, of like lemons or limes mm -hmm. and they're going to go hard or they're going to go bad, then I will go ahead and juice them and put them in ice cube trays as well. Now, here's something else you can do with ice cube trays. This is my tip, guys. Skip the baby food aisle. Look, we raised four boys and seldom did we have any prepared baby food on hand. I made my own baby food from scratch and then you freeze it in the ice cube trays and make sure you label it because green beans and sweet peas look really, really alike when they are frozen. And yet they taste entirely different. So label them and remember that one standard size ice cube is two tablespoons. What Hope would do is that she would cook produce until mm -hmm. it's soft. Then she would puree it until it's smooth and freeze it in ice cube trays. Boy, she did that a lot. We saved a lot mm -hmm. of money because baby food is hugely expensive. Here's a tip for those of you who are having trouble finding fresh greens. Vaughn, a lovely viewer from Australia, suggests making your own sprouts. And she reminds us there are several different kinds of seeds that you can try sprouting. We've done sprouts before. It's been a long time. But I was glad she sent that tip in because now I want to try it again. Mary reports, I travel to Mennonite Groceries in Wisconsin, oh. which sells dated foods and local produce. The selection is good and I can buy about 80% of what I need in a week. I compare prices online and I've noticed a savings of 50 to 75% off retail. Now we do this at that Amish store. We do. They have do. foods there that are actually a little beyond the expiration date. That does not mean that the food is bad. You have to kind of try it out a little bit. We have had very good luck in buying foods from them at extremely low prices. Now that's also where we buy our bulk foods. Now if you're interested in learning more about how to shop effectively and buy bulk foods and where you might be able to find places in your area or online to get great prices on bulk to get great prices on bulk foods. We actually did a video on it a while back. I'll make sure that that video is linked in the description of this video and I'll put it up above too. Number 12 is, here's what Caroline recently discovered. If you shop at the farmer's market, ask the vendor how much it would cost to purchase the discarded greens. She did this and got a huge crate of beet greens, turnip greens, carrot tops, and radish greens for free. And those greens so awesome. are loaded with vitamins and minerals and all kinds of good nutrition. 
Hey, we're recording this in March, but hot weather is on the way. And this reminder comes from our viewer, Martha, who says, remember to put a cooler in the back of your car before you leave to go to the grocery store, because you're going to want to separate out those refrigerated and frozen goods and make sure you keep them on ice until you get them home. Great tip. Mm -hmm. Number 14, Kim loves a great deal. Buy holiday items after the holidays. Like for example, I saw turkeys this year for 75 five percent mm -hmm. off after thanksgiving and you know it's interesting because you'll find uh similar deals on stuff that isn't even like edible at the grocery store. I got really great like cheese knives, this set of five cheese knives uh, from Kroger one year and it was marked all the way down to a dollar because it was a holiday pattern on the handles of the cheese knives. So be sure that you're looking in the general merchandise section as well as the actual edible food section when you're looking after major holidays. Now here's a tip from Brie. She reminds us, you know, everybody has this, like, you want to plan a whole menu for a week. But she said, you know what? She doesn't do that. And she finds it just as effective to plan for two or three days ahead. So don't like strictly put yourself in this box and say, mm -hmm. well, I can't plan for a whole week. Therefore, I cannot menu plan. She said, nope, you can still very effectively do it and just go ahead and cook things ahead. And then you're only cooking every three or four days, but you are doing that menu planning ahead of time for the next three or four days. Works just as well, in her opinion, as menu planning for an entire week. Number 16, focus on cheap filler ingredients. Mm -hmm. Here is Melissa's advice. We all need to start bulking up on our meals with mm -hmm. rice, oats, and beans. It's always a way to like stretch those main ingredients, right? Is to add those fillers. So Donna was thinking along exactly the same lines as Melissa when she gave us these examples and said you might consider serving rice, potatoes, or if your kids are hungry after the meal is already served, just give them a slice of bread and let them put something on the slice of bread if they're still hungry after eating their regular meal. Tip number 17 is... Tanya, a UK viewer, shares, mm -hmm. I look for damaged hoods. Those are outer boxes that are taped up, but inside are perfectly sealed. Yeah. For just 20% of the original price, that is a lot yeah, that's off. A lot. That's 80% off. This week I had cereal originally priced at three and a half pounds, paid literally 54p oh per box. And they were in date until February 2023. <laughs> Great idea. Mm -hmm. uh, number 18, reduce how much you eat. That's a reminder from our viewer, Sharon P. She's absolutely right. We all tend to overeat. Just being mindful of how much you're eating and stopping when you're full will actually help you to save money on groceries because you won't be eating as much food. Tip number 19, skip the drinks. Or at least our Danish viewer, Katarine, reminds us to cut your alcohol consumption or at least enjoy your cocktail hour at home. Number 20, several viewers pointed out, take the expiration dates with a grain of salt. That's right. Expiration dates do not necessarily mean that the food goes bad on that date. Yep, absolutely. A lot of food will last months after that date. That's just an arbitrary date that they set. It's, I guess it's a best guess. <laughs> it is. You know what? And if it would be helpful to you guys for us to do a short video on what all of these terms mean when it comes to food, because it can be confusing, uh, we'll do that for you. Just let us know in the comments section to just explaining best by date um, and all of those different terms as far as food and whether it's good or whether it's not good, what that means. Oh, yeah. All right, tip number 21, order online and pick it up at the curb. Mendy says that she has saved lots of money doing this and she loves the luxury of time to curate her grocery order. I love how she used the word curate because I would use that <laughs> word. <laughs> and she can easily compare the best deals at the store. Amanda's got another creative way that she saves money. Amanda's creative way is that to, this is a way to cut her meat consumption. Cut it about 50-50 with cooked 
brown lentils. That is a good way to make it go farther. It is actually becoming really popular because y'all know we're vegan. Like we don't, we just do 100% lentils. Yeah. But I, we've had several of you comment in the comment section and say, I'm really using lentils a lot right now. And I've always thought yeah. that lentils had a meaty taste to them anyway. <laughs> so well, I would have no trouble with that. All right. Number 23, V Zimmer says that Wednesday is Senior Citizen Day at her store. Everything is 5% off for seniors if you have a store loyalty card. And another viewer added to that and reminds us that sometimes military teachers and medical staff also receive discounts, maybe not every week, but at different times of the year. So you need to watch for that. Speaking of store loyalty cards, mm -hmm. and we didn't specifically mention this in the first video, sign up for that store loyalty card. Yes, they are tracking your shopping behavior, mm -hmm. but yes, they will send you high value coupons, specifically around what you buy. So they'll target yeah. you in a good way. <laughs> yes, it's always good to be targeted in a good way, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, so they'll let you know about sales and they'll give you some additional perks. Now, we're not lying to you. Yes, they are tracking your behavior. And yes, you are giving up your email address or some of your privacy in order to get the high value coupons. It is totally and completely up to you whether you do that or whether you don't. We recommend it. There are a couple of store loyalty cards that we use all the time. And remember, this channel is the spaghetti at the wall channel. We're going to throw tons and tons and tons of ideas your way. And it's up to you to determine which ideas stick and which ideas don't. That's right. Tip number 25, we're nearly halfway through. Do a reverse budget. I have literally never thought of this idea. It comes from Pam. She gave us directions. So start with your budget, divide that amount by the number of days. So you know how much money you have available to spend per day. Mm -hmm. Then divide it by the number of ounces. So she's considering four pounds of food per day per adult. All right. So then she comes up with the answer to the question, how much food do I need? And how much can I afford to buy for each day of the month? Interesting idea. Wow. That's Number great. Number 26. That's, that's good. Number 26 is viewer love bug reminds us to get rain checks if something is out of stock. Uh, that way you can get the item for the sale price when they restock by using that rain check. Some ads will say no rain checks, but not all of them do. I would check with the store manager and see if they'll offer a rain check on an item if they're out of stock on it. Now, here's a question for you all, because when the pandemic started, all of our stores, all of them in town said no rain checks. I would love to know. Tell us in the comments section, are your stores in your area back to issuing rain checks because that would be a happy, happy day for us when rain checks come back in season. Yeah. Faith says that she skips weekly shopping altogether by shopping just once a month. I guess the less you're out there shopping, the less you're going to spend. The most we've ever gotten it down to is once every two weeks. So, I mean, oh my Who God, knows? it's so off to you. Yeah. Who shop once a month? I know I've asked before, but you're going to have to tell me in the comments section whether you're one of these people. I just, you know, I love, I love the idea, but it's, you know, I don't, I don't, I think we could. We, we, we did it like in the middle of the pandemic. We only went once a month. So we could do it. I think we really could. It takes a lot of planning. Tip number 28, barter. Faith also has this strategy perfected. I grow a lot of veggies and raise rabbits and chickens to fill up my freezer. I live in an area where a lot of people are growing crops. So I trade or help others to get fruits. That's a good idea. Yep. Barter. 29, Shop for food at your local drugstore. Noreen tells us how to do it. CVS has some great food sales combining manufacturer coupons. They're CRT coupons and extra bucks. I never would have thought of that. I know. Are you guys, um, are, are you people who shop at CVS? Because I know there's like a whole, like you can get some incredible deals and pay almost nothing. I've seen it done. And um, I think that there is probably a real art to be able to do that. Tip number 30, use cash back on your credit card. Now we've said it on this channel before, we'll say it again. We don't use credit cards, we use only debit cards. And that was a deliberate choice on our part. But whether you use credit cards or whether you don't, you are still welcome to come and to hang out <laughs> with 
us, we're not going to make that an issue. There are plenty of you who have said you use them, you use them responsibly. Apparently, Patrick is one of them. He got a sweet, sweet deal recently with his card. The Chase Freedom card has an extra bonus category for big lots right now. It says save 10% with a $6 back maximum. So you can spend up to 60 bucks. Plus you get the standard 1% cash back on top of that. But he does say, remember, pay off that card every single month. Right. 31, April reminds us that once you get food home, store it properly to extend the shelf life. Now, it's super helpful to know exactly how to do that and what you should and shouldn't do. We actually have a sweet little ebook. We offer it for free. I'm going to make sure that there's a link to it in the description of this video. And that ebook is going to tell you how to seasonally shop for vegetables to get the best deals year round. And the last two pages of that ebook are the 15 most popular fruits, the 15 most popular vegetables. I tell you what the shelf life is, and then I tell you exactly what to do to extend the shelf life of each and every every one of them. Once again, look for the link in the description of the video. Tip number 32. Make the store an offer on merchandise that is already discounted. Here's how Jonna used this method recently. Mm -hmm. The store has sparkling juices from France every Christmas ooh, ooh for $8 a bottle. Ooh la la. Yeah, definitely ooh la la. <laughs> After the holidays, they went down to $4 a bottle. Still way too high. Finally, the store had one cart full left and were marked down to $2 a bottle. Not good enough Not for Jonna. Quite. No, here's nope. what she did. <laughs> so I offered to buy the whole cart full, about 20 B, what's 20 B? 20 bottles. 20 bottles for about $1 a bottle. Got it. Love then it. I had those bottles of lovely carbonated grape juice to give as gifts when I was invited to someone's house for dinner or to have when somebody came over to my house. That's patience. That and is patience awesome. Patience pays off. And now we all want to go to Jonna's for dinner. Just saying. I'd love some of that sparkly <laughs> grape juice. That'd be awesome. <laughs> Tip number 33. Rosemary says, get a vacuum sealer and use it. Some of you also have mentioned that, that you have a vacuum sealer and love, love, love it. Joe Lind reminds us not to pass by roadside stands. Yeah. Fortunate and grateful to live near family-run farms and stands. And because I am in California, they run 10 months a year. Love to support the local family businesses. And there's a bonus of having the food as fresh as it that gets. Truth. The yeah. dollar savings are incredible as well. Number 35, this suggestion comes from Penny Nichols. I like that name. I do too. It's so fun. <laughs> All right. Split larger quantities with friends and family. Number 36, skip the small prepackaged snacks. Get yourself, Donna says, get a big old bag of those snacks and then put them in smaller bags to take to lunch throughout the week. Smart idea. Number 37. Yep. You can always put them in a little Ziplocs. Absolutely. Number 37, Dollar General accepts both manufacture and store coupons. Really? And nice. speaking of coupons, both Alicia and Terry pointed out that not only does Dollar General have grocery items on Saturday, there is a digital coupon for $5 oh. off $25. That is awesome. Mm -hmm. I, I looked it up online and indeed they do have that coupon available right now. Uh, tip number 38. Here's how Loretta reduces both time and money in the grocery store. She makes her list in the order of how her store is laid out. So she never does any backtracking throughout the store. Smart, smart ideas. It helps her with impulse buying and sticking to that list and staying on budget because she is in and out. I am amazed at her organization skills. That's great. Number 39, find a butcher school. Barb has one in her area. Mm -hmm. Our local meat cutting school sells boxes of different cuts for really cheap. Wow. Same as a grocery store, but cheaper. And the only difference is that you're getting the students to cut it. Never, ever heard of that. Tell us, is is there like one of these butcher schools in your area? Because we, do, we don't have any around here. Mm -mm. All right. Tip number 40, Olivia says, bring along only the money that you're willing to spend. So that's a really great idea. And then you you're automatically not going to overspend, right? Because that's all you got. That would take care of it. <laughs> 41, compromise on your grocery list. One viewer, Terry, put it this way. Mm -hmm. I needed some ground beef for a meal. 
I was preparing, but it was about a dollar a pound more than I was prepared to pay. Mm -hmm. Now on that same shopping trip, I also needed to buy aluminum foil. So what I did was I bought generic foil, which left me enough money to buy the ground beef. Yeah, keeping everything in balance. And I think that's what she's saying. Yeah. That's such a, a great thing to think about. Now, I would add this to her suggestion. Make sure when you walk in that that grocery list is prioritized. Yes, it's my favorite word in the whole world, prioritized, <laughs> because your list should have the things that are most important to you at the top of that list, the stuff you know, I've got to get these things on this grocery shopping trip. Because Larry said it. In the last several weeks, the mustard that we buy has almost doubled in price. And I think we're going to find that you're going to have to have that mm -hmm. prioritized list, which is, by the way, tip number, I forget what the, that's my tip. All right. And, um, and so I think you're going to have to have that prioritized list where the most important things are at the top and the stuff that can possibly wait until the next shopping trip at the bottom of the list. And saves that, a lot of time. And that was tip 42. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Tip number 43, Ella scored a great deal when her local store was going to throw away the day-old wow. bread. She asked about the bread, and they gave it to her for free. High five, Ella. Now, recently, we went to Kroger, and they had a whole cart full of bread, buns, and all kinds of bread material. Yeah, I don't know what it have, about nine pieces in it. They were all marked 50 cents, and we started picking out a couple of them here and there, and we didn't have a shopping cart, and we had nowhere to carry them. I said, Hope, let's just take the whole cart, everything and all, so we did. It was a good deal. Tip number 44, even E119 correctly stated, Items on the bottom shelf are usually the cheapest, leaving the more expensive, brightly colored containers of brand names at eye level. And that is because that shelf space, uh, the manufacturers purchase shelf space in the grocery store. That shelf space is in the middle. That's the higher priced shelf space. We did a whole video on this, on ways that grocery stores get you to spend more money. Once again, we'll make sure that video is linked in the description of this video. Tip number 45. Even he adds this advice, don't buy individual yogurt containers, yeah. buy quart size. Add six ounce yogurt, fruit, and granola mm -hmm. to reusable cups. Now we do this. Yeah. We'll buy it in bulk and then we'll split it down into smaller servings. Tip number 46, stop wasting the parts of plants that can actually be eaten. You can use apple peels, the tops of celery, beet greens, and a whole lot more. Make so sure true. whether you can eat it. And you know what? If you just have a few scraps left over of vegetables, wash those scraps up, put them in a bag in the freezer, and then use them to make homemade vegetable broth later. Number 47, don't assume that all locations of a chain grocery store in your area have the same prices on the same items. Do a little shopping around and yep. explore. You might find a store that has a lot cheaper items. We have one particular Kroger store that marks down their produce less yeah. than any of the other Kroger stores in our area. We have three Absolutely. total, and one of them is extra better at doing this. That's right. Tip number 48, Valerie explains her system. This is really great. I actually walk through my Aldi, get this, with my Walmart app open because it is the most accurate at pricing and she can directly compare the price in the Aldi store to that of Walmart. Love it. That's a really good one. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Number 49, Susan saves on a common item bought at the grocery store. She says, I rarely use foil or plastic wrap to cover a bowl or something in the fridge. I use a plate of the appropriate size. That will save you a lot of foil and saran wrap paper. And tip number 50, have a weekly clean out the fridge meal. This is our idea. Put all the leftovers on the table. Each family gets to pick what they want to eat up before the leftovers go bad. It's a great way to stop throwing out so much food. Super. Now listen, if you're intrigued and you just literally can't wait to hear more and you missed the first part of this series where we gave you another 50 ways to save money on groceries, so important right now, especially in 2022, <laughs> that video is linked right over there. Go ahead and click on that and watch that video next.